In this video, we are going to cover a very important topic in backend development, which is API documentation. As your team grows and your application grows, it becomes very important to actually keep track of the different endpoints that you have so that your team members or other developers know how to interact with your backend, which endpoints they can call, which payloads they should send, and what different responses they should expect. Now, when it comes to documenting your APIs, there's actually an industry standard called Open API, which is actually the specification that needs to be followed. And it doesn't really care about the framework that you are using or the programming language that you are using. This is the standard. And you will often hear something called Swagger. Swagger is basically the set of tools that you are going to be using to build your documentation based on that Open API specification. So let's see how we can use Swagger in NestJS to create and document our APIs. I have here a backend application of an e-commerce app. So let's say we have three different modules, auth, orders, and products, and each has a controller with some endpoints, such as login, register, create order, get all orders, and the same thing for products, CRUD operations on products. Let's see now how we can use Swagger to actually document this application and show everything. The first step is to install at nestjs slash Swagger. So let's do that. After this is done, we need to go to our main.ts and make the proper setup for our Swagger documentation. So the first step is to create our configuration. To do that, we can use the document builder class. So all we have to do is just instantiate a new instance of that class. And then here we can change some method to provide some information about our document, such as the title, the description, the version. And then finally we call build. And if you take a look at document builder, we can see that we have a lot of other methods so we can provide more information and we can chain all of those together just like we did here. And of course, Document Builder is from the NestJS Swagger package that we just installed. Now, the next step is to create our Swagger document and we can easily do that by using the Swagger module from NestJS Swagger and calling the create document method, which will take the app uh, instance, which is our Nest, uh, NestJS application instance right here. And then, of course, the configuration that we just created with Document Builder. Now, if we take a look at document, it is of type Open API object. We still have one more thing to do, which is uh, setting it up. So we can simply just say Swagger module dot setup. And then here we specify the path of our documentation and then the app instance again and the document that we just created. With that in place, let's go ahead and run our server. And now if you open localhost 3000 slash API, we can see that we got some automatically generated documentation slash API again, because in the setup here, we specified API as our path. It could have been anything else. And if you take a look, we can see that we have three different sections, products, orders, and auth. And we have some endpoints under each, for example, get products, post products for the create endpoint, and so on. Those were automatically scanned and generated by Swagger. So basically Swagger took a look. We have three different modules. We have orders, auth products. We have different controllers. It went through our controllers, for example, auth here, and then it went through our route handlers. It took a look. We have post here, slash login, post slash register. So it went ahead and created those different endpoints based on those decorators. However, if we take a look at our schemas here, for example, create product DTO, create order request DTO, they are empty. So if I was to make a request to create products, it tells us that the request body is required, but it doesn't actually show us what payload we should be sending. Even though in our code, we are specifying the body as create product DTO, and we do have some fields here, we still need to add some more information so that Swagger can actually scan those properly and show us the proper schema. But before doing that, you might be wondering how come Swagger was able to automatically scan the names of those sections. So for example, how did it know we had an auth and orders and products? And by the way, this is one of the new features from the latest uh, Swagger versions. Beforehand, we didn't have that. So uh, in older versions, it would actually create one single section called default, and then it would throw all the different endpoints uh, together under that default section. So now the way it works is Swagger takes a look at our controller uh, name here. So for example, auth controller. If you take a look, the section is auth. However, if it was something else, let's say it was authentication, for example, let's save that. 
and then refresh the page. If you take a look here, it is now authentication. So this is a feature in the newer Swagger versions. In older version, you would actually need to go ahead and add a decorator, which is API tags from Nest.js Swagger. And then here you would specify, for example, authentication. Now after saving, if you go ahead and refresh again, now you can see the section name is authentication. Previously, in the previous versions, we had to go through all of our different controllers and add this API tag manually for all of our controllers and then specify uh, whatever section we had just so that we can divide our different endpoints on the documentation page. Now, you can still override the controller prefix here. For example, if you didn't want it to be products, you wanted it, I don't know, to be product section or whatever name you want, you can just override it with the API tags that was uh, previously always used to separate. Now, if we refresh, you can see now it's called product section. So that's just a small uh, trick. Now let's go back and open up the products endpoint again. Like we said, we don't have an example value here. Our schema is empty and the response doesn't even show anything. So let's go ahead and make uh, this more useful by adding some decorators. It's pretty easy. All we have to do is just add the API property decorator, which is from Nest.js Swagger. And this is going to read the type that we pass in here to TypeScript. So we can set those properties and we can also pass a lot of different uh, configurations here so for example we can set a description uh, the name of the product and then now after saving if you go back and refresh as you can see now we have an example value and then the schema here is filled now we have this description because we added the description parameter and then we have the types now we can also uh, override the example values by using example for example and for name we could say microwave for the price, we could say example uh, price 15. Let's save. And now if we refresh again, we can see the examples used now are name microwave, price 15. Uh, and again, the schema is properly set up here now. Now let's assume the price was not required for some reason. We can also add required false. If we save, we take a look at our schema. Now only name has this asterisk, price doesn't really have it, marking it as optional. Now, instead of actually adding this required false, we can use something else other than API property. We could use API property optional, which is also the same as saying required false for API property. We can also specify the description or set a description for our endpoint. Let's see how we can do that. So on top of my create product route handler, I added another decorator called API operation as well. It's from Nest.js Swagger. If you notice, all the different decorators from Nest.js Swagger start with API, such as API tags, API operation, API property, property optional, and so on. And we can use or pass some different uh, parameters here, such as summary. So I set this to be used to create a new product and refresh our page. As you can see here, we now have a description describing what operation this is or what this does. This is used to create a new product, for example. And now finally, let's see how we can also specify the response to this specific route handler. Now here we have many different options. We could say API response, which takes some parameters such as status, for example, we could say 201, meaning created. Uh, and then we could, for example, give it a description, meaning that if you get this response, it would mean that the product got created. And we can also pass in a type. And for the type, just like we have this create product DTO, let's say we had a create product uh, response, for example, here, which is going to return the uh, name, the price, and then let's say it will also return an ID. So the ID of the newly created uh, product. Of course, we would need to also set those different decorators for it to work so that the Swagger uh, tool can actually work properly. Let's specify this type. Let's save. If we refresh, if you take a look at the response here, it says that for the code 201, it means that the product got created and this would be our API response, ID, string, name, price. Again, if you want to actually replace those with some examples like we did before, we can just go ahead and add this example field. So now we have a proper example. We have a proper functioning schema, which shows us the different fields that are going to be returned. And now a faster way, let's say you don't want to always have to set up the status to a one for your for your created APIs, you could actually use API created response. And then here you could just set the description and the type. No need to set the status anymore. As you can see, automatically it set the codes to 201. 
Now we also have different other uh, API response types such as API OK response, meaning status 200. We might have API bad request in case we have some errors thrown from this API. For example, I used API bad request response here with a description of bad payload sent, meaning that we would throw a 400 issue or 400 error whenever the payload being sent is in the wrong format. So now if we save and refresh here, we can see that create products now has two different responses. It could be code 201, meaning product created with this specific payload, or it could, it could be a failure, so code 400, which would mean that there was a bad payload sent. Of course, we can also add a type here. So just like our response or successful response has a type here, we, can all, we could also do the same here for the error. So we could specify a type, we could create a class of error true, for example, with a message. Of course, we would also need to specify the API properties, and then we could assign it here for the type, which would show us the payload for a failed response. This is pretty much the same. Now let's do a small exercise and document our get all products response. So I have here a get product response DTO. First step is we have to add the API properties for our response. And then, of course, we can, like we said before, add some fields or parameters. And then here, back in our controller, we now need to specify the response. We said we have many different uh, decorators for that. For the get, we can use API OK response, which would return status 200. And then here, let's specify the type of the response, which is get product response DTO. And this, since this is an array, we should specify is array true for it to be shown as an array in the response. Or if we don't want to do that, we can remove this array true and then just add the brackets to this type, specifying that this is an array. Now, if you go back and refresh, we can see that now the response for get products is basically this schema right here, an array of products. And we can, of course, set our own example values if you wanted to. And again, we can add a summary here with at API operation for this uh, endpoint. I also want to point out that for routes or endpoints with add param here, uh, for example, get product by ID where we send a parameter of ID, we can see that this was uh, automatically scanned by Swagger. So if you take a look here, we can see that we are supposed to send uh, an ID as a route param to call this endpoint. So this is nice. Of course, for the response, we would need to set our own decorator, but you can see that uh, Swagger is actually doing a lot of things automatically. And we can also add some decorators to specify the responses, the payloads, and so on. Now, what if we actually needed to protect those APIs inside of the products controller? So we would need a bearer token, let's say, to actually call them. Uh, we can use the API bearer auth decorator. And for that to work, we should go to main.ts. And here, to document builder, we should also chain add bearer token. And now since products controller has this API bearer auth, it means those APIs are protected and need a valid token to be accessed. If we refresh here, we can see that only for the product section, we have this lock icon. We don't have it for orders or authentication, meaning that to access those routes, we would need to have a valid token. Of course, we could click on authorize here and we would paste our token here usually and then press on authorize. So we can see that now we have a token uh, used here and we can try out those examples. Now, of course, I, I could put any token now and then execute, it will still work. And that's because I'm not actually using a proper guard here. So in your real applications or your real projects, you would be using a guard here and then you would have uh, some guard that will check if that token is actually valid. If it isn't, it would throw an error and of course you also have a decorator for that for example api forbidden response and then you could add whatever description or type of the response that you're going to get like the schema and so on but i'm not going to add those now i mean you can go as deep as you want with the decorators and the documentation for more information you can check out this uh, nest.js documentation where it shows you all of the different uh, decorators that you can use and where you can use them on for example method or controller or both so as you can see, there are a lot of things that you can use. I will leave a link down in the description. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.